Hey, this is Joe with Grow Up Build It, and today I'm going to tell you all about spotted bee balm. Of all the plants I grow, one of the strangest, most alien looking flowers has got to be spotted bee balm. It's very showy, but it seems like it would belong better in some remote, far off exotic jungle rather than eastern North America. But this will be a complete profile on this native wildflower, including what it is and why you should grow it, the growing conditions, physical description and ID, growing from seed, saving seed, wildlife and garden uses, and review. So this really is a very unique plant to grow, very easy to grow, so I hope you stick around, but let's dive in and take a closer look. All right, so what is spotted bee balm? Spotted bee balm is a native annual to short-lived perennial wildflower native to Eastern North America primary range is east of the Rocky Mountains. I've had plants live for just a single year and others that lasted three or four years. So it won't live long, but it is quick to establish from seed, which we'll talk about later. And it does sell seed a little bit. Scientifically, it's known as Monarda punctata, and it's a member of the mint family. It will grow two to three feet tall in optimum conditions and bloom in late summer to fall. It serves as a valuable nectar and pollen source during that time for numerous different types of pollinators. Why you should grow it. Beauty. The blooms of this plant are complex, intricate, and just beautiful. Individual tubes are, that are white or yellow with uh, like speckled reddish dots on them are similar to other bee balm flowers like Monarda didyma or Fistulosa, but these blooms are just so much more complex to me. And being arrayed up the stalk instead of just at the end of the stalk makes it even more interesting. The next reason is that pollinators absolutely love it. This is a very popular plant with bees and butterflies. It also serves as a larval host for several uh, butterflies and moths. So, and that would include the gray marvel and the raspberry perasta. You can generally find about three to six bumblebees buzzing around my patch when it's blooming. And also, if you're enjoying this video, please click like and give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel out and I really do appreciate it. The long bloom duration and timing. So this flower is going to start blooming in mid to late summer, which for me is about mid-August in zone six. And it'll be very showy for about two months. But if you have a number of plants, you'll still probably have some blooming even a month after that. I normally do. So you can have uh, a, a pollen and nectar source for pollinators for up to three months. So the plant you see here is still providing pollen and nectar and it is November 15th, 2020. So that's, I had three months of color from this thing. It is very easy to grow from seed. Spotted bee balm is one of the easier flowers to grow from seed. It's quick to germinate and establish and you can grow hundreds of plants from just a couple bucks worth of seed. Drought tolerant. So this is naturally found in very sandy soil Spotted bee balm is a very drought tolerant plant, so it can grow and thrive where other members of the Monarda genus cannot. Okay, let's get into growing conditions. But before I forget, this entire video does exist as an article at our website, growupbuttle.com. So if you look for a quick reference later, you can go there. I'll have a link below, just put it in your favorites. But uh, for growing conditions, spotted bee balm can grow in full sun or partial shade. The more sun it receives, the taller and showier it will be. It has to have well-drained soil. It is susceptible to root rot and can't tolerate wet or constantly moist soil. Any form of loam or sandy soil can be suitable as long as it drains well. Okay, so physical description and ID in this plant. It's gonna grow two to three feet tall in optimum growing conditions and like spacing of two to three feet. It'll be a clump of leaves with stalks that rise up and the leaves will be along the stalk. Being a member of the mint family, it's gonna have a square or four cornered stalk the color of the stalk will be green to reddish purple, and it'll have little tiny white hairs on it. For leaves, they're gonna be opposite or paired along the stalk. They'll be kind of lance shaped, lancelot shaped, and about three inches long by one inch wide, and they're gonna have very serrated edges. It'll be big serrations as well. Now the flower is the most interesting aspect of this plant. There's gonna be several world flowers that wrap around the stem, and they're arrayed along the stalk. So, they're very colorful with pink to purple leaf bracts. That's the leaves hanging down at the bottom. They kind of transition from one color to the next, to the green. And uh, the individual flowers are tubular, similar to 
other members of the Monarda genus, and they're going to be kind of uh, cream colored or white or yellow in color, and they'll be dappled with red and purple dots. The spotted appearance is kind of where it gets its common name from. But the blooms are so complex to look at and describe and just beautiful. Blooming generally lasts about two months where the plant is very showy. If you have a whole lot of plants, you can get a total bloom duration of longer because some will start earlier than others, which that's what usually happens with me. The root system of spotted bee balm is a short tap root with some fibrous roots, but unlike other types of bee balm, this one does not spread by rhizomes at all. It has no rhizomes. I've never seen it. I've been growing it for several years. I, and you can see these roots here. There should be some evidence of that. It mainly just spreads by seed. Okay, so how to grow spotted bee balm from seed. It is very easy to grow. There is no pretreatment required for the seed. It can be direct sowed on the surface of soil after last frost. What I do is I take a container with moist potting soil and I scatter the seed right on top. The tiny seed of this plant needs light to germinate, so you're just gonna press it into the surface of the soil. Then I will put it in a location that gets morning sun and afternoon shade, and I will only water with a pump sprayer or a hand sprayer just to mist it so I don't wash any seed away. Germination will happen within two to three weeks. Speaking of seed, it's very easy to save seed from spotted bee balm. Just like other members of the Monarda genus, the seed are gonna be contained in these little tiny tubes that were the flowers. So about three to four weeks after blooming, get a big paper bag and carefully cut the stalk below the blooms, holding the stalk upright so that you don't tip it sideways or upside down until it is safely over your paper bag. And that's because the seed may fall right out of those tubes if you turn it sideways and you would lose all the seed. But let it dry out in the paper bag for another week or so in a cool, dry place, and then just take uh, the seed heads off the stalk and put them into a plastic container with a lid and shake them up. After you've shaken it for about 30 seconds, pour the mixture directly through a kitchen strainer onto a paper plate to remove some of the chaff and you will have the seed. And here's the seed, it is very tiny, but um, once you've got the seed, you can store it for about a year or two in a Ziploc bag or an envelope. A Ziploc bag if it's truly dry though. So and store it in a cool, dry place out of the sun. Okay, so how fast does it establish? Well, since it's a very short-lived perennial or annual, it's gonna bloom the first year in my experience. Even if it's just in a little four-inch pot, you can have it bloom in a four-inch pot. Um, so it, you know, if you plant it in May, you're probably gonna have blooms by September. So you don't have to wait very long. For wildlife, spotted bee balm is gonna bring in lots of pollinators. There's numerous species of bees that will visit this plant. They're very active and when I go out there when it's blooming, I can generally see you know six different bees wherever I look. Spotted bee balm also brings in smaller butterflies, mainly smaller ones. Occasionally I'll see a larger swallowtail or monarch, but primarily it's gonna attract the smaller varieties of butterfly. It's also a larval host to at least three species so growing this plant can directly benefit your local insect population. Grow at least three of these plants to attract more wildlife. It's basically a single specimen can seem like a random vending machine on the highway to a passing pollinator, but they're really looking for an all you can eat buffet with a whole bunch of flowers. So plant more, you get more. When it comes to deer and rabbits, they're gonna leave spotted bee balm alone. The foliage is very strong. It smells like oregano or thyme. And if you save the seed, you'll definitely realize this very quickly and that strong flavoring keeps deer and rabbits away. I've never seen any damage to these plants, and that's pretty common for any member of the mint family. For garden uses, spotted bee balm is well-behaved enough to go in a formal flower bed and can even be grown in a container for a patio or balcony, actually. So if you wanted it on your deck, no problem. The larger the pot you put it in, the bigger it's gonna get. It does self-seed a bit, but individual seedlings are easy enough to pull in the spring for like a formal flower bed. What you can see, most of these plants back here are volunteers. I might have helped scatter it, I really can't recall, but I don't mind having them, they look nice. But otherwise, you can easily grow this plant in any wildflower meadow, micro prairie, or any other border garden, just as long as the soil drains well and it gets a lot of sun. Now, it doesn't tolerate tall competition that well, so the population may die out if it's surrounded by really massive plants, you know, of, that are five, six feet tall. When it comes to diseases, like other members of the Monarda genus, this one can have some foliar issues like uh, powdery mildew or rust. You know, these are funguses and they're mainly gonna happen if it's in too much moisture and not enough airflow. So as long as you plant the plants far enough apart 
you know, respect the spacing, the recommended spacing, you should be okay. Okay, so there's a few other interesting things about this plant that you may find interesting. It was pretty heavily used medicinally by Native Americans. I was able to find about 18 uses by a half dozen different tribes. And the uses range from like a cough, cold, respiratory aid, about to bowels and digestion, to even just flavoring or incense. Someday maybe I'll do another video on the use of this plant. But uh, it is also used as an essential oil. You can make a tea from the leaves or use the leaves as a garnish or a salad. But it's a very strong flavor in the leaves. I've eaten the leaf myself and it's potent, man. It almost tastes spicy, actually. But I suppose if you ate a straight leaf of thyme, you'd probably get the same sensation. But this also has been researched uh, for medical applications, which lends some credence to the former uses by Native Americans. Okay, so let's review. Spotted bee balm is a very short-lived plant. It's, sometimes it's an annual, sometimes you'll have it live for three or four years. It'll grow two to three feet tall in full sun and well-drained soil. It really likes sandy soil the best. It is very attractive to pollinators. It has a very long blue time and it's a late summer to fall bloom. And it just looks absolutely cool. So if you have any questions at all about this, if I can answer them, I will just ask in the comments. And uh, check out the article on this uh, below for a quick reference in the future. And please click the thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. It really does help me out. And if you guys have any questions at all, ask in the comments. And everybody, please have a good day. Bye.